Yeah, well, and so so many women don't prioritize it, and then they do end up with incontinence and pelvic floor pain and other issues, um, you know, many months, years afterwards, and it becomes a bigger issue. And I'm curious as to, you said, you know, like prevention, right, of things that you can do prior uh, to be able to kind of help strengthen the pelvic floor. When, when, when is that timeline? Like what would be your ideal timeline for um, someone coming in or starting to learn how to uh, implement some of the work that you guys would help them with during pregnancy? A general recommendation, I usually tell people to come in sometime late third, I'm sorry, late first trimester. Um, If, you know, nothing, if everything's kind of going well, right, and they don't have any questions or anything prior to that, I like to do that initial assessment and education at the end of the first trimester, because there's a lot of stuff we want to educate you on getting through your pregnancy, you know, the best way possible. So we'll do a lot of that education at that first visit. We don't usually do an intravaginal pelvic floor assessment until the second trimester, just because your risk of miscarriage is so much higher in the first trimester. And even though there's not been shown a correlation between a pelvic floor assessment and miscarriage, we still just want to be like, we're just not going to go there right until second trimester. And then, you know, but really if you're having sex and intravaginal pelvic floor muscle exam, is not any more aggressive than that. So if you're not on pelvic rest where you've been, your doctor has told you not to have sex, you're fine to have a pelvic floor muscle exam. Um, So usually I'll tell people, you know, come in sometime in the first trimester, we'll talk through what to expect, what are the changes you can expect in your body, what is your history, do you have any predisposing factors, I always want to know what the fitness routine is, I want to educate people on what the current evidence-based Um, recommendations for exercise during pregnancy are because your exercise during pregnancy has not only a huge impact on your postpartum recovery, but also how comfortable you are doing your pregnancy. And it actually has some impacts on the baby's health as well. So I always like to just make sure people are educated in that first trimester. What should I be aiming for with exercise, barring any medical complications? And then I help them devise a plan. You know, what are the activities that you like to be doing and what can you probably be expecting in terms of modification um, throughout your pregnancy? So I have a client right now, this is her third pregnancy, and she started seeing me after her first one. She saw me during her second one, and now she's seeing me during her third one. And, you know, we talked about that from the beginning, like you're probably going to see me maybe once a month to once a trimester if there's no issues, right? If you don't have any questions, your workouts are going well, you're not having any symptoms, Um, you know, we're just going to do once a month to once a trimester to just check in, make sure your abdomen's looking good. You're not doing anything. She's very active and she likes to work out. We want to make sure that her fitness routine is safe for her abdominal wall. She's not putting herself at risk for anything, you know, that she now knows about because it's her third baby (laughs) versus her first. Um, you know, so we want to do, be doing all the things prevention wise that we can, um, So yeah, I usually recommend that people come in, you know, that first trimester so we can really talk through their history and their goals and find out what they want their pregnancy to look like, what kind of delivery are they after. And then we can determine the best frequency to see them to make sure that we're, we're putting them in the best um, place to reach the goals that they have. Right. So if they have a history of pain with intercourse and what we call vaginismus, which is where your pelvic floor is very, very tight. If they already know they have a history of that and they want to have a natural unmedicated childbirth, I'm, I'm probably going to be seeing that person more frequently than I would see someone who maybe is on their second baby. They already had one uncomplicated pregnancy and a great birth experience. And now they just really want to maintain their fitness level through their pregnancy, make sure that they can have another really great birth experience, right? I'd see that person less frequently than I would see someone in the first scenario that I mentioned. So it's it's individualized, right? It's not, oh, here's your PT prescription for twice a week for six weeks. And that's what it is. Like, it depends on the person. Where are they starting from and what do they want to accomplish? Um, is going to determine the plan, but definitely in the first trimester, um, you know, and I have, I have colleagues who would say, we want to see you before you get pregnant. Right. And I think it's especially true when you do have underlying conditions. If you have endometriosis, if you have PCOS, if you have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, if you have, you know, known things in your history, if you have sexual trauma that has caused pains with pain with intercourse in the past, if you had dick disc herniations, Um, you know, playing sports in college, and they've been pretty well maintained because you stay really good about your core strength. Like, let's see you in the first trimester. (laughs) 
<laughs> because I want to make sure your disc herniations don't get symptomatic when you can't do your normal core strengthening and you have relaxant in your system that's making everything a little bit bendier and you have excess, you know, your body is just going to change fast, especially after about 20 weeks. And sometimes, especially really, you know, athletic kind of fit people aren't expecting how rapid those changes are and the exact impact that they're going to have on maybe a prior injury that has been very well managed up until that point. 